Hello again everybody and welcome to the New Year's Eve edition of Half Century of Collecting Sports Cards YouTube video. Today we are going to do the all-time greatest first baseman. These cards sitting out here are the cards who did not make the top 15 list. This is a loaded position. You can see we got these players that didn't make Listen, we've got some Hall of Famers there. Bill Terry, Frank Chance, High Pockets Kelly, George Sizzler, Tony Perez, possible future Hall of Famer there, Keith Hernandez. Good chance of getting in this year. Todd Helton, Hall of Famer Fred McGriff. Joey Votto's got a good chance in the future. Dick Allen's got a good chance. Mattingly, maybe. Bill White, maybe. Hall of Famer, Jeff Bagwell, Ben Taylor, Orlando Cepeda, Hank Greenberg, Jim Tome, Gil Hodges, Buck O'Neill. O'Neill's not so much for his playing days, although he was a very good player, but all his contributions to baseball after his playing career. We're going to take a quick look at the positions we've previously done. You have to look back at my old videos, but these are the all-time top 10 third basemen going from number 10. Was Ray Dandridge down to number one, Mike Schmidt. All-time greatest shortstops. We got Robin Yount, number 10. Down to number one, Hannes Wagner. And all-time best second baseman from Bid McPhee. down to Rogers Hornsby. With that, let's get to our first baseman. Got a, a new contraption since we had a Christmas in here. My daughter thought I needed something to better hold the camera still instead of just holding it in my hand. So we're gonna work on doing that. I got this little thing set up. I finally found a use for any of you have these things. I kind of stacked them for my little holder thing. And let me get this camera in place as we work on doing our top 15. This is number 15 on my list for all-time greatest first baseman, Miguel Cabrera. I think another guy who's going to get in the Hall of Fame. In fact, everybody on this top 15 is either in or probably going to get in the top or into the Hall of Fame. Number 14, active player who's probably going to end up in the top 10 if he keeps going like he is, Paul Goldschmidt. And we've got uh, number 13, and I think th 9 through 13 you could arguably put in any order. So he could have been on my top 10. Willie McCovey, over 500 career home runs. We've got number 11, the 342 lifetime batting average. That's a 1888 Goodwin card of Dan Brothers. Beautiful set. We've got number 11. Just missed my top 10, Eddie Murray, another 500 home run guy. And then we will get to my number 10. I don't know if there's a little hometown bias in there, but uh, number 10 on my list has, has gone through it. That's his rookie card from 1955. Tops, and I had to show a little twins card of him there too. Uh, 63 tops. It's Harmon Killebrew. Killebrew, we'll go through a little more detail on my top 10. Killebrew, the pay at Idaho guy who uh what i remember actually late in his career so 73 74 watching baseball for the first time and by then i thought the guy was a bum because he didn't hit much struck out a lot but before that was an incredible player which i eventually learned he was then retired as the number five all-time home run leader with 573 uh, at the time number one for al righties the guy was an on-base machine, lots of walks, had a 376 on-base percentage for his career and an over 500 slugging percentage, and that's playing in a you know, big-time pitcher's era. 
I still remember going to old Metropolitan Stadium and when, when I went, it was always in the outfield and in left field, there was a seat there that was marked 520 feet away from home plate where you hit a home run. The guy had over eight seasons of 40 plus home runs. Six of them led the league. And in that 69 season, which is just the year after the year of the pitcher, so still good pitching. He had 49 homers, 140 ribbies, 427 on base percentage, 145 walks, over 1,000 OPS, and he was the MVP. He finished in the top five in MVP six times. Um, wasn't a great defender, which hurt his career war, and you're going to find that out with a few of these guys. Um, Eddie Murray and Willie McCovey, too, we just passed up on, are in that category as well. The Harmon Killer, number nine on the list, was a little better defender, had a shorter career, and this is his 1948-49 Leaf card. Also show here his 52 tops. Uh, Johnny Mize was a guy who just played 15 years in the majors, and he lost his um, three of his peak years fighting in World War II. His first nine years were really, really good. Hit over 300 every year. Lowest on-base percentage was 380 in that time. Played those years with the Cardinals and the New York Giants. Um, best years were 40 with the Cardinals when he hit 43 homers, 137 ribbies, 314 average. And then in 1947, did something that nobody else has ever done. Hit over 50 homers, 51, and had less than 50 strikeouts. Only 42 strikeouts. Had 138 ribbies that year as well. His last five years, four of those were with these Yankees. Um, he was a world champion. And with those Yankees, he wasn't necessarily a huge a contributor anymore, but got world, a bunch of world titles playing with some great players. Number eight on the list, this is a 1887 old judge card. And this is Roger Connor. He is kind of the original home run dude. He was the uh, lifetime home run leader from the time he retired, 19, or 1897, until Babe Ruth passed him um, 23 years later. And the home run total at that time was 138, which sounds kind of paltry compared to Ruth's total of 714. But that was before the dead ball area when, you know, it was still dead ball and not a lot of home runs hit. He was originally a third baseman, but in the 1880 season, he had 60 errors in 83 games. So he got moved to first base, actually became a good fielder, ran well. He had over 200 career triples and over 200 career stolen bases and retired with a 84 career war and almost 2,500 hits. You can see the stain back on that card but I'll take that on a old judge card any day next on the list we've got somebody who unfortunately never got a playing day card this is uh, old negro leaguer mule subtles he played 20 years from 24 to 44 was a big dude the this card in the back they this was a 1990 eclipse card it says he was a six foot six 230 pounder other sources I've read that he was 6'3", 161, 1'5", um, But a couple places that did say he used a 50-ounce bat, which is Babe Ruth size. Big bat. Um, he, you know, why does he get on this list? Um, just a lot of players who played against him and with him talked about how good he was. It had to compare him up to some of the all-time greats that we have better stats on. The stats we do have in 74 at-bats in barnstorming games against white teams, and remember these are all-stars mostly that he's playing against, not just you know the lower-type players, but 74 at-bats, he had 11 home runs in those games. He won a couple of National, or Negro National League titles with the St. Louis Stars when his teammates were Cool Papa Bell and Willie Wells. In 1926, he won a Triple Crown. Um, when he retired, or actually many years after he retired, but uh, in 2001, Bill James came out with uh, his list of the top 100 players of all time. And Bill James 
really studied stats and player as well, and he rated him as the 43rd best player of all time. So I guess I respect that opinion. Number six on my list is uh, mainly a Chicago White Sox, great Hall, Hall of Famer. I saw his 400th career home run, happened to be in Chicago watching game that day. He's a great on-base guy. Frank Thomas, University of Auburn guy, career 419 on-base percentage and 521 homers. He had uh, two consecutive MVPs in 93 and 94. That 94 season, and granted it's a strike-shortened season, but still a decent amount of at-bats, and he had a 487, almost 500 on-base percentage, and a over 700 slugging percentage. Um, he might have been the worst defender of all the uh, first basemen on here with a negative 22.5 defensive war. But despite that, still had a total war of 74 from baseball reference. Next on the list, we got a real old timer. Started his career in 1871. And this is his 1887 Allen and Ginter card. He played 27 years and ended up with a 94 war. One of the game's first great superstars. He uh, <coughs> actually played for the Chicago White Stockings, which did not become the White Sox. That's actually the team that became the Cubs in the National League. First player over 3,000 hits. He won six NL titles in just the 1880s. He also became a manager for quite a year and was pretty innovative. He was one of the first guys to use signs, started spring training. Unfortunately, it sounds like he wasn't really a great guy and was uh, pro-segregation and kind of led the ban on not signing black players anymore, but was a great player in his day. Next on the list, we've got a, a Negro Leaguer and another guy who did not, unfortunately, have any playing day cards. And this is Buck Leonard. He played from 1933 to 1950. So kind of just missed that cutoff when some guys <coughs> were getting signed to play in the current uh, major leagues. He played for the Homestead Grays, and they were the three four hitters were him or Josh Gibson, three, and Buck Leonard, four, is kind of similar to the Ruth Gehrig for the Yankees of the same era. I'm a little bit, I guess, a little later than that era. But he was dubbed the Black Lou Gehrig, and Lou Gehrig said that was one of the biggest honors he ever had was being compared to somebody like Buck Leonard. Leonard, he eventually was offered a major league contract, but it was when he was 45 years old in 1952, and he said, I'm I'm not really going to show very well at this age, so he declined to go. But Buck Leonard, the first, him and Josh Gibson, actually the first uh, Negro League-only players who got inducted into the Hall of Fame back in 1972. And in 1994, the Sporting News came out with their top 100 players of all time, and he was number 47 on that list so I might even be ranking him a little low here at number four all time for first base but great player that unfortunately we just don't know quite as much about number three on the list double x Jimmy Fox and this is his 1941 play ball card uh, this is a little later in his career where he's a teammate of 400 hitter Ted Williams this year 41 his best years were with the Philadelphia Athletics he was a catcher for a little while, converted to first base. And I think you remember, you know, the, I think it's a Diamond Star card where he's got the catcher's gear on. He was still mainly a first baseman at that time, but loved catching. He was a um, two-time MVP with the A's and then a one-time MVP with the Red Sox. That Red Sox year, 1938, he had 50 homers, 175 RBIs, and a 349 average. Led the league in RBIs and average, but those 50 home runs did not lead the league as this guy hit 58, Hank Greenberg, that same season. So Fox ended his career the number two all-time home run guy next to Babe Ruth, 534 homers. 
His career triple slash line is 325, 428 on base, and 609 slugging percentage. Did win a triple crown one year, and uh, the year prior to that, he had a 58 homer, 169 RBI season. Number two is a recent retiree, not yet in the Hall of Fame. Definitely will be a first ballot Hall of Famer from the Dominican Republic. Originally moved to the U.S. while I was in high school, and then went to junior college in Missouri, played shortstop, and ended up being kind of a mid-round pick. But what a pick it was. The guy ended up over 100 in career war, three-time MVP, four times second in MVP, a third place MVP, a fourth place MVP, and a fifth place MVP. So 10 times was in the top five in MVP. Incredibly consistent those first 10 years with the Cardinals where he was over 100 ribbies every year, over 30 homers every year, over 300 average every year. Lowest on base percentage was 394 in there. He had seven 40 plus homer seasons and he was only striking out like 50 to 60 times a year. And then unfortunately, plantar fasciitis, I think, took a real toll on his career. Slowed him down and uh, with the Angels. Played a bunch of years and he just kept trying to play through it as more of a just a little above probably average player. But still with that career, 703 home runs, 2,218 RBIs, almost 700 doubles, and almost 3,400 hits in his career. Albert Pujols, originally a third baseman. And number one on the list, I don't think a lot of argument here, is Lou Gehrig. And this is shown on his 34 Gaudi. Love that 34 Gaudi, just because those American League players also have that Lou Gehrig says at the bottom, and it happens to be Lou Gehrig himself on the card. You see the back of the card, but the Columbia Two Sports Star, football and baseball. And number one, I don't think just because he's a sentimental favorite or a nice guy, which he really was, or that he gave that great speech, had that Iron Man streak of over 2,100 games, but he just was good. He's the highest baseball reference war guy of any first baseman at 113.8. He had 2,700 hits, 500 over 500 doubles, over 160 triples, 493 homers, and 1,995 ribbies for his career. His career batting average, you remember, <laughs> don't think of necessarily being that high, you think of the power, but 340 career batting average, and 447 on base percentage, and a 632 slugging percentage so an OPS lifetime of 1080 that's just I mean that includes the good and the bad years 1080 hit 11 straight years over a thousand was a two-time MVP came in second twice he had eight years over 150 RBIs with the highest being 185 and 31 he uh batted fourth of course behind Babe Ruth so Back when they gave the number one hitter number one, the two hitter number two, the three hitter Ruth number three, and he got number four. And that number four was the uh, first number ever retired. He also was the first player ever on a Wheaties box. Unfortunately, he had to retire early, age 36, because of ALS, um, which he died from within a couple of years. Gave that great speech in 1939, where he said, I'm the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Um, said an awful lot of other just really cool, nice things. Um, Lou Gehrig also had a ton of concussions and there was debate, to, you know, did he actually have a different neurological disease from all the concussions? But I think with all the muscular stuff, it is more consistent with ALS, which was diagnosed at the Mayo Clinic in that last year. So that's it. That is the top 10 first baseman of all time. And there you see my all time top infield, third base, shortstop, second base, first base. So happy new year, everybody. Happy 2024. 
That was from Iceland, the cool trip we took this year. See all those cards? All right, take care, everybody.